Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got an interesting video to share with you guys. I'm not going to call it a knife review for a couple of reasons. One, because this is a pre-production prototype. And two, this is an absolutely ridiculous knife that uh, is not marketed as something that is practical. No. Um, this knife is uh, the PMP Titano. And I, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people will have to strain themselves too hard to understand that this thing is meant to be ridiculous for the sake of just being ridiculous. These are actually still available for pre-order for people who collect or just enjoy overbuilt knives. That is absolutely 100% like who this is meant for. These are still available. They are expensive, but you can pre-order them on Tools for Gents. I don't know which versions are still available, but I will link it right down below so you guys can check it out. If you want to, there are a few different color setups. Uh, thanks so much to PMP for providing me with the pre-production prototype. To my knowledge, there's just one of these and I've got it right now. So I'm sure they're really wanting it back. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. No, I don't get to keep this. Um, so I'm not going to really review this. This is more of just like a presentation to like sort of give you guys a preview. Um, once the full production version is here and in my hands, I will absolutely do a review of the final product. But this is pretty close uh, to what the final versions will look like. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a look. Anybody who has pre-ordered it or, you know, is interested because this is a wild thing, right? We see overbuilt knives in the knife world, but this is kind of like a, another step, right? Uh, so who's manufacturing these? I mean, it's, the brand is PMP, but it's, it's actually being manufactured by um, Maxace. And in the past, PMP has had, like, for example, their Alpha Beast was done by Riyadh. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but that's who's actually going to do it. I think these come in blue and tumbled or blue and satin, uh, bronze or gold and satin. They have an all tumbled one that looks like this, right? And then they have an all black one, which I think looks exceptional. I think that's one of the ones that's still available. Like I said, there'll be links down below. You guys check it out, check it out if you want to. We'll go ahead and do some measurements and some size comparisons. And we'll just talk briefly about this knife because it is, <laughs> it's freaking weird. It looks like a gardening shovel, like an aggressive, like if you could, you know, find, it's like a World of Warcraft gardening shovel is what this looks like. Overall length, as stumpy as it looks, it's actually nine inches overall. That's, uh, <laughs> wild the blade length is in at the, at the very base is actually four and an eighth i'm going to call it a solid four inches throughout and then your cutting edge is yeah we're going to call that 3.75 inches of cutting edge uh big knife first of all let's do some regular size comparisons against some regular knives up against the ontario rat model one and the ontario rat model two so yeah uh, I think it's probably pretty easy to get the idea here. We'll kind of speed through these. Demco AD 20.5, Spyderco PM2, and the Spyderco Para 3. I'm sorry, PM2 and Para 3 on the bottom. I don't know why I've been mixing those up lately. And then finally, for some reason, for no one, for absolutely no one, we'll do it up against the Benchmade Bugout. And uh, the Benchmade Group Tillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Fortunately for you guys, I am a collector of monster overbuilt knives. And I actually have a ton of them out here right now. So if you're like me and you like these crazy, massively overbuilt production knives, I'm going to put them up against, uh, put it up against some of the more popular ones. How about the Maxace Hephaestus? Uh, the Hephaestus is about the same overall length. It's just nowhere near as tall, right? Thickness, it's going to be very, very similar. Um, actually, we're going to leave that one out here. Let's put it up against the Riot T1000. This is actually not a knife that hardly anybody has right now, but I would venture to guess at some point Riot will make the T1000 more available uh, to everybody. How about um, the Midgard's Messer Beowulf? That's a good one It's because that's a really tall blade, even taller than, you know, the Titano. Um, this I can't, Have I said the name of it yet? <laughs> I can't remember if I opened this video by saying the name of it. I'll have to edit it otherwise. Um, let's leave this guy out here and do another 
uh, Midgard's Messer Knife. How about the Viking? That one's got a super tall blade too, right? These are barely fitting on screen. Actually, even taller than the Viking. Um, how about some of uh, some more Maxe stuff? Here's some longer ones, right? Like the um, the uh, Vortex. The Vortex is definitely longer, and it's actually a little bit thicker. That's the that's the thickest up to one more that I've got out here. Here's another one that's longer, um, but about the same thickness, and that's the um, I, the Maxe is tit Titanus. <laughs> This is the Titano and the Titanus. So, I mean, these are all big in their different ways. So, I mean, like the uh, Titanus certainly has a tall blade, but still not quite as tall as the Titano. Um, and then finally, the definitely the thickest knife that I've got, um, the PMP Alpha Beast. So, same brand here. It's obviously just a different type of overbuilt. Um, and in terms of thickness, I think maybe, all right, I'm going to do my best to kind of line these up from, you know, the, the thickest on the far right, and then we'll go, you know, slightly thinner. So, uh, as we progress to the left side, this is kind of difficult. These, some of these want to fall over cause they have rounded backspacers. So I'm going to try and space these out a bit so we don't get them bumping into each other. Definitely. The Vortex, it's just, it's, it's quite a bit thinner than the, um, Alpha Beast, right? And then a whole bunch in a row, uh, because the, the Vortex is the next thickest. Um, then we have, um, at just slightly, it's like 230 thousandths. That's the Titano, uh, the Riot, uh, that's the one that wants to tip over. The Riot T1000, uh, the Max Ace of Phaestus, for sure. Um, this one also wanting to tip over. All of these have curved backspacers. Um, so I'll just sort of put these in here. Uh, the Viking, same kind of deal there. Um, the uh, the uh, Beowulf also, you know, they might look slightly different because of how the spines, you know, the texturing. Um, but the these are all right about the same. And then even the Titanus has about the same thickness of blade. So really they're all about the same in terms of thickness, about 230, 235 thousandths up until we get to the Vortex, which is... 260 thousandths, 270 thousandths or so. And then um, this guy is uh, 0.4 <laughs> inches thick. So it's not as thick as the PMP Alpha Beast, but where it is um, definitely going to have its claim to fame is going to be in blade height, which I'll actually measure for you real quick. That's not normally something that I do. Maximum blade height on this guy is almost two and a half inches. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Absolutely the tallest blade, you know, with maybe the Viking coming in next. Um, let's go ahead and, you know, I really, I want to comment on the action because it, it, it's almost always the case that the pre-production prototype versions of knives don't have quite as good as action as the final production samples. This guy is full shut, but I'm going to tell you what's contributing to that is the fact that the blade is so unbelievably heavy. I think the pivot action inside is kind of probably just mediocre, right? And the detent, I'm really hoping that the detent is a little stronger in the production versions because as you can see, I can flip it, but it's almost like the detent either needs to be heavier, which I don't think will probably solve the problem. That, or I think the flipper tab might actually need to be a little bit more robust, which I don't think is the case. So I can only hope that the, the detent is a little bit heavier. Can you reverse flick it? Yes, but holy moly, the muscle in this finger is going to be so strong. It takes an enormous amount of effort, and it's not so much that the detent is so heavy, but just the, the leverage that it takes, right? Which is the problem with creating a heavier detent uh, to make it flip better. So I think a larger flipper tab might have, might have helped. But here's the thing that's really just important to people who are wanting to sit around and fidget with it. It obviously, you know, utility has kind of gone out the window. I know, I know people are going to aggressively miss the point here. If it isn't clear, this thing is not meant to be a serious thing. There is an enormous market for things that are not super duper serious, and it extends far beyond the world of pocket knives. You are surrounded with elements like these in everyday things. And you have been for your entire life. So it really shouldn't be that difficult to grasp the concept here, even if the item is not for you. For some people, people you know, for some uh, reason, people seem to really zero in on knife is tall. It can't be anything but that. And I'm not, even though I clicked on this video and it's obvious, right? Because I can see it in the thumbnail. I right? just <laughs> come back down to earth, right? It's okay for these types of things to exist. Certainly. Because remember, 
if it's not for you, you just don't buy it, which is the case with everything. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, I mean, if you're wondering, right, the detent strength makes, and, and the combination of the flipper tab and really just the height and mass of the blade make it really awkward to flip because there is so much material here, not just in terms of thickness, but this way, right? I mean, there's, there's three or four knives in this easily, right? And fairly robust knives. I mean, if we're talking about the steel that goes into the blade on the rat, which the rat one is not a knife that most people would consider to be a small knife, a small folding knife. There's maybe five or six of those in this, you know, not really. I think four, maybe four of those in there, but yeah, it's, it's big. I think is the point that I'm trying to make. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm honestly not sure if they have decided to change the size of the screws. I very much doubt it. I believe these are T10. Um, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel or the pinned comment under every single video on my channel. Nope, I'm wrong. These are actually T8. They just look huge. They also look very similar to the handle screws that Rick Hinder uses. I think it's just a similar style of screw. We'll try a T8 on here. Yeah, those are all T8. You see what I mean, though? Those of you who have Hinder knives, they do look very similar. Uh, but Hinder uses more of a, a, it's actually a hex instead of a Torx. Um, but uh, yeah, um, three screws on each side. That doesn't surprise me at all. And then some weird sort of flathead things, which is, you know, I don't know how much we really want to complain about that because this is already a ridiculous knife that's supposed to be ridiculous. Um, so it, it, which is funny, we're talking about flatheads being ridiculous when they're one of the most common fasteners out there. But they have a tiny one for the pocket clip, and then we've got uh, larger ones for the pivot. I'm. It would not surprise me at all. If, I'm not going to take this as a, this apart because it's a pre-production prototype, and I really don't feel comfortable doing that. I'm going to guess it's free spinning. It would shock me to find out that it was captive. But, you know, uh, to companies making these, it's still a good idea to make captive pivots because there are reasons for some people to take these things apart after they buy them and own them for themselves. So I doubt that the final production versions will include that. But just a note for future projects, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness for anybody who is curious. Blade stock thickness on the Titano, like I said, I think is about 230 thousandths. Yeah, 232. So it is very nearly a quarter inch thick, which is not, you don't, we don't need that, obviously, right? Again, people itching to like complain. Oh, I keep forgetting. It's supposed to be ridiculous. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know how many people I've caught in that. That's fine. Go ahead and leave your cards. It's good for the algorithm. You go right ahead. I'm just cracking jokes. But, um, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It absolutely is, and that that is not lost on me. If that is not clear, um, let's see here. Wait, oh, of course we have to weigh it. I uh, there is funny enough actually um, some weight reduction <laughs> on this thing, um, which is um, I guess good. It's just on one. No, it's on both sides. There's a little bit back there. I honestly have no idea why they even milled it. Right. I guess for, for the few people who are going to buy this and actually carry it, like force it into an EDC rule, which is fine. It's up to you. As it sits, this sample weighs about 11.68 ounces, which is, um, I think, pretty close to the T1000. This is 11, right? How's the uh, Viking? Yeah. So it's extremely, actually, the Viking is coming in heavier. And I think that's because the Viking is not milled. But we're looking at 12 ounces versus 11.68. Interesting. So it's not quite as heavy as the Viking, which, again, it doesn't even matter. I mean, like, you're going to know. It's not like you're going to be like, golly, this is sure is heavy in the pocket. Like, it's a surprise, right? It's it's, <laughs> it's heavy, definitely. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So the thing here is, uh, you know, that I don't think the people who are going to buy this because it's expensive, the pre-order for this is like 500 bucks or I think it's 500 euros from tools for Jan. So it's actually a little more than that, right? This is meant for people who collect and just enjoy expensive overbuilt knives. And there isn't anything wrong with that. You don't have to, you know, 
These things don't need to be validated by everybody, and they won't be. They are definitely not for the majority of people. They are for a small select group of people who just find joy in this, and these people enjoying this stuff, including myself, it doesn't affect anybody else's world at all. <laughs> you can just go on and, and enjoy whatever you enjoy, right? So, yes, it's expensive. It's kind of a ridiculous thing to wrap your head around, but then again, you know, I think there are far more ridiculous things on this earth. For example, what people will pay for Pokemon cards. So before you complain about this, I would go complain to the Pokemon card channels, right? Because that's, to me, is a far more ridiculous concept, but I kind of, I kind of get it at the same time, right? I mean, what are you going to do? It just is what it is. Um, that's just a piece of cardboard with some foil on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, this is expensive. I don't know that that price is completely and totally justified, right? I feel like there's not a whole lot going on here. But it is cool, and for people who love overbuilt knives, this is going to scratch the itch. In this case, you know, people wanting me to define overbuilt, because it's just a frame lock, right? Uh, overbuilt can mean a lot of different things. In this case, what we're talking about is just a ridiculous size of materials. The blade is just a crazy size. It's really thick. The handle shape, all of that. It's just a lot of the materials. If you define it differently, that's fine. As far as this video goes, that's how I'm going to define it, right? Sometimes it can be, you know, in terms of lock strength or durability, blade durability, this or that, right? However you want to define it. There's lots of different ways. In this case, it's just an overabundance of material in one object. Titanium and the blade will be M390, which is a hilarious choice for this blade. But then again, what do you, what do you pick, right? <laughs> I don't know. That's probably going to satisfy the collectors, right? Even though there's a different composition that might work better. Um, but uh, I, I don't know how much these are really going to get used. The funny thing is, is that the blade is so tall that when it finally does get down to the, you know, the cutting edge, it's actually tapered quite a bit. And it's freaking sharp. It's not an absolute laser beam, but can it slice? Yeah, pretty easily. In fact, even this edge up here can slice. <laughs> it's... It's such a funny thing, like getting at this paper with this edge. Look at this. <laughs> um, even with M390, which is not a uh, composition known for toughness, there's so much material here and there's just hardly a tip at all. It's very unlikely that you will break this blade. I would venture to guess you would warp the pivot or the frame before you would break the blade. I, I don't think that this was designed in a way for people, you know, to take it out and pry with. I, I, I think you should still use a pry bar, right? Um, but the blade geometry by itself, when we're not considering other, any other elements of the knife, is very durable for sure. And this is kind of a, kind of a, oh, I mean, it's a satin finished blade, machine, fashion, uh, machine, machine satin finished. What is wrong with my mouth? Um, and it's been, you know, some of this discoloration here, this cloudiness, not discoloration, this cloudiness is sort of what I see with prototypes. They just kind of, they get a finish on there and they just send it out, right, to, to people like me to take a look at. But the final products always look substantially better. Um, so the titanium looks pretty good. And I think this is probably fairly similar to what we'll see on the final product. I think that the blade finish on the satin versions of these as they release them from the factory, will look substantially better. That's usually the case, right? And just judging off Max Ace's past work, I, I bet that will be the case. Chamfered quite a bit on the inside of this hole. The blade is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it is just, it looks like something that was once much longer. Like maybe this, it, it looks like something that was like a machete and it got, it, it broke. So they just ground it into this weird little point, which is a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an interesting thing to look at. And I gotta, I gotta admit, I, I just like stuff like this. Like, it's cool. It just immediately, like looking at it as somebody who enjoys this, my brain just says, this is totally and completely impractical. I mean, it, literally every knife in my collection will perform better than this at pretty much anything on a day-to-day -day basis. But I like this because it's different and it's weird, right? As a knife collector, this is the kind of stuff that's interesting. And uh, whenever I have somebody over to look at my collection, it's this type of stuff that they go, oh my God, it's the same thing every time. It's just crazy, 
right? I mean, you, you don't normally see stuff like this. This is what draws attention, whether people are like it or not, right? I mean, it's again, it should be, I, I think it's really easy to understand. It's just an insane thing because it's different from what we normally see. And so there, there's, there's joy to be found in it, right? There's a little hole on the flipper tab. What's that for? I don't think it's for anything. I think it's just there because hole because they they have a lot of space here and they they just filled it with stuff so that everything could look decently busy without being overboard. A lot of uh, you know heavy chamfering here. This isn't really chamfering; it's just like sort of cut in there for design. Got some big holes here. I kind of would have preferred it without the holes, but the holes are are fine, right? They're lipped. They also um, are, or I'm sorry, they're bold. They're also bold around the screws, which is a nice touch. There is a huge backspacer um, that doubles as the lanyard hole. We didn't really talk about ergonomics. One of the um, most interesting and fun parts about this knife is simply holding it. It is... I mean, if you were to close your eyes, you would assume you were holding something with a much longer blade uh, because it just feels like a handle associated with a much bigger knife. You're locked in. It feels good, right? I can't speak on how well the ergonomics are going to translate to utility because I don't think there's a realistic scenario where you could <laughs> apply this, you know? But man, it feels cool. Woo, boy, that is <laughs> just feels awesome. It feels like power, you know? Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's just that thing that gives you a certain emotional response when you're holding it, which I think it was, you know, I think that was probably one of their missions. And if so, mission accomplished, right? The handle looks insane and it, it is attached to an insane blade. I think they did a good job of matching the handle insanity to the blade insanity while the blade is definitely the, you know, the breadwinner there. Um, parts of the backspace are actually radius, which is kind of cool. There's jimping everywhere because, of course, right? The pocket clip is absolutely wild, and it is doing its own thing, but it also kind of goes with the knife. It's a big, crazy, milled titanium pocket clip that, I mean, in and of itself, if it were made out of steel, there's enough material there to make a tiny blade out of, right? Um, it, it looks like a sort of scimitar uh, or demon tail or something, right? It'll go in and out of the pocket, but it's not super comfortable. In fact, the entire knife riding in your pocket, it just feels silly. You're going to feel a little bit silly putting this in your pocket. And I think that's okay. People who really, really want to carry it are probably going to get it, right? I mean, you, you can't buy something with like this without being at least a little bit self-aware. It just kind of comes with the territory. So, yeah, uh, knock yourself out. It's going to be a, it's going to be heavy. Wear a belt. There is a, there's a lanyard hole down here, too, for some reason. Again, I think this is just sort of a decorative hole. It's just, you know, it's just a hole because holes, right? They decided to put holes on everything. Hole, 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 hole. It's a very holy knife, right? Um, there's a um, there's an over-travel because, and you know what? There is actually a lock bar insert. I, I don't know that I've actually noticed that up until now, but there is a lock bar insert right here. But I don't know if the lock bar insert actually doubles as the over travel. No, it doesn't. This is a rare situation where the lock bar insert itself does not double as the over travel stop, but there is a lock bar stabilizer or like a, like a hinder lock bar stabilizer, which absolutely does keep the lock bar from over traveling and also bending in towards the frame. So that's nice. How's the lockout? As you could imagine, it's completely solid. There's a massive stop pin back here with a huge amount of shouldering, no blade play up, down, left, to right. Disengaging the lock bar is a little bit intense because this little area right here is kind of sharp. I mean, you can get in there, but it's a little bit pinchy. I don't think it should be so abrupt, but yeah, yeah, that's the shape that they did. I don't think they're gonna change it for the production versions. There is no double clutch. There is no pivot lash at all. And you know, it's a little bit tight, but this is a pre-production sample. The blade will still overcome that, especially if you decide to like oil it. So if yours comes tight, don't worry. If you oil it, you'll be fine. The detent is actually probably really strong, but removing, like pulling on this flipper tab and getting this big of a blade to release, you don't have that distinct crisp sort of click pull away. It's more of a gah, right? So the detent is actually pretty well tuned for this thing. And the prototype at least is centered. There's no pivot lash. Max Ace knows how to do this, right? It also makes an incredibly satisfying noise when it's locked out. Man, that is really some intense <laughs> lockout there. 
this is a crazy thing. Crazy thing for people who like to collect, you know, very specific types of knives. I like overbuilt knives. I just do. I think they're really fun. They're really neat. They're really interesting. This knife is for absolutely nobody except people who love to collect knives, don't mind spending quite a bit of money on knives, and specifically like the crazy overbuilt stuff. You don't have to, well, no, I shouldn't say specifically because I'm somebody who likes a lot of different types of knives, but I am drawn towards the crazy overbuilt stuff a little bit just because it's weird. If you like that stuff, I think the PMP um, Titano is definitely one that you'll enjoy having in your collection because I've just, there's not really a whole lot out there that's like it. There's that, there's another one, Jim Skelton shows it, has showed it on his channel and it's actually got kind of a similar pocket clip. Uh, the, I forget what the guy's name is, it's a custom knife maker. But the blade actually does look like a spade or like a little, like a garden shovel. It's, it's just crazy. Um, so there, there are other things like this that have been done before. This isn't the first thing in, in, in the whole world of the pocket, the, the whole knife world that's ever had a really tall, wide blade. But it is, it is crazy and ridiculous, right? So if you're into that, this is Max Ace quality. If you like Max Ace overbuilt knives, you're probably used to spending this type of money on it. Um, I, uh, I, you know, as an enthusiast who zeroes in on teeny tiny little elements like manipulation, there's part of me wants to critique it, but then again, it's like, why? I mean, it functions well enough for what it is, right? So it's just a fun, crazy thing. If you want to pre-order it, I'm sure you'll be happy with it if you're, if you're into this type of stuff. If you're not into overbuilt knives, obviously this is a huge pass. <laughs> it's just, this is, this was made for very specific people and that's how I'm judging it, right? Um, how will it work as an EDC knife? Terrible. I don't, why? I mean, there's honestly no point in even talking about it. I'm sure other channels will, and you guys can check it out. But here, I mean, you know, if you made it to the end of the video and you're waiting for me to talk about how well it'll work in an EDC scenario, I don't even know why we would even question it. It's not going to work very well. It's too big and it's too heavy and it's too ridiculous. It's going to slow everything down. It'll cut. I mean, if you're just like, but will it cut stuff? Yeah, it will. But it'll just do everything slower than, it, you know, a regular knife. And any scenario that would call on the exact extra durability that comes with a knife like this versus a knife like this or a knife like this, right? Those scenarios will be so unbelievably rare. I mean, at that point, just use a fixed blade or better yet, use a pry bar. Use the right tool. This is meant to be fun. It is functional, it is durable, it is capable, but it is most importantly inconvenient and definitely meant as, you know, an enthusiast slash collector item, right? So, fun stuff. I really hope PMP and Max Ace continue to do stuff like this. Collaborations between those two companies are going to make this specific population of people very, very happy. It's fun. I'm glad that they're doing it. I'm I'm a collector of this stuff and I think it's I think it's really neat. So that's really all I have to say about this. Thanks so much to PMP for sending this in. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.